somebody asked the other day how I was going to make the Brooklyn's muffler. Um, this is kind of the way I do it. I don't know if this is the only way, I'm sure there's hundreds of ways you could do this, but this worked pretty well with, with my Austin 7 one, so I'm doing it again for the Riley. I made up this block, it's just MDF all glued together, basically shaped to how I want it, but it's extra thick, it's thicker than it needs to be. Um, I then cut out blanks of steel. This is 1.2 mil thick steel, and these will get bolted through to that piece of uh, MDF. And where it wraps around in the corners, obviously you, you have to kind of relieve the corners, you want these to come together. The way I figured that out was just with a, a quick paper template, I sort of laid that on there, folded this down, and just uh, trimmed it until it until it gave me a nice seam and I just transferred that to the steel. So what I do next is bolt these to either side of this and then using a wooden mallet which is missing um, I start knocking the edges around. Um, I'll bolt this up and I'll start hammering around and we'll have a look. Okay uh, found my mallet. Uh, that literally took about two minutes of hammering to hammer those edges around like that. I do need a very small trim. My pattern isn't exactly right. I just need a little bit cut off the corners here just to get these to line up nicely. But this is overlapping so we'll actually trim this later anyway. Um, also, similar with the ends, this kind of pinches up here, but we, we deal with that in a, in a later step. So I'll go ahead now and do the, the other side. Um, I'll just have to sit this one over the edge of the bench, just because the bolts are too long. And you're, you're literally just sort of buffing this over. You just whack it. Uh, you sort of use glancing blows to get it to go around the curve and then you just hammer it down and this doesn't have to be perfect because um, you can sort of adjust it all with a hammer and dolly after it's taken off the wooden former anyway this is it with the the sides hammered around uh, I did have to make a couple of small adjustments to this the sort of slot in here and the way I did that was with a little diamond cutting disc on the Dremel you just slice it uh, and then you can hammer the edges together like I say this doesn't actually have to be perfect um, we're going to clean it all up with a hammer and dolly it gets then trimmed uh, and then eventually the two halves get welded together but you've got plenty of time to to make these all nice and tidy so the next thing to do will be take it out of here unbolt it and mark it up for trimming. So this is ready to mark up so I can trim the halves. The tube I'm using is 32 millimeter diameter. Um, so you have to work out how high up off the flat outside face does this need to be so that um, with the tube sitting inside it because it'll be up a little bit. Where does that line need to be? And it takes a little bit of trial and error, but I worked out that one of these blocks of wood, it's about 19 millimeter, uh, three quarters of an inch, is about right. So I may need to just pack this up a little bit. Um, but if I put this on a flat piece of steel, I can sort of see where it touches and you sort of make sure that the line is in the right place so that it's actually gonna wrap around the outside of the tube. Now the two halves are trimmed, um, I'll be able to hammer and dolly these corners just to get them to, to be a nice tight seam for when I weld them. There's a little bit of metal there I need to cut out. Uh, and to trim the ends for when the, where the pipe goes in, you just simply push the pipe up into the corner and I can trace around that and just cut that out. So to finish dressing up these little corners, I just put a suitable dolly in the vise, 
and just sort of use that to hammer around those corners just to get them smooth. Um, now I can weld those up. And you can see I've also cut out the, the end where the pipe goes in. Uh, this is the muffler finished. I think I missed a few steps in showing what I was doing, um, but they were kind of boring steps. It was just basically welding the two halves together. Uh, as always, my welding isn't going to win any awards for beauty, but it's solid and it should be functional. Um, again, it's one of these things where if I had the chance to make five or six of them in a row, I'd probably start getting okay at it, but uh, it's kind of a one-off just to get me past the next hurdle. So it'll do for now. Um, this was the, the one I did for the Austin 7 ages ago. And this doesn't have the two pins in the middle. This one does. I, I welded these two bars through. Um, the other difference with this one is the pipes actually go two inches into the cavity, um, which according to the Brooklyn's muffler rules is the maximum you're allowed to go in. So it'll look okay. It'll look better once it's all painted matte black with exhaust paint, uh, which is what I'll do next. And then I guess I'll have to give it a try. Uh, actually, I forgot a step. Um, before I paint it, I am just giving it a soak in some phosphoric acid solution. Uh, it's pretty dilute, but that will take care of any rust on it, any surface rust, um, and it should give it a good key for the paint. I won't leave it in there for too long. Uh, while I'm waiting for that, this was how the wrapped exhaust came out. Uh, it's quite hard to do that neatly. Uh, this is titanium wrap, not um, not the fiberglass stuff. Uh, even so, it's a good idea to wear gloves when you're doing it. You, you still get little fibers off it. And instead of using the um, the sort of metal cable ties that came with it, I just use stainless steel lock wire just in a few places just to make sure it doesn't come undone. Uh, yeah, it does look a bit like a mummy gone wrong, but it does the trick. Um, I have run the engine. The engine's actually running really well now. Um, runs well, sounds nice, um, everything got up to temperature nicely. This is my temporary muffler. But you can see how it sounds tinny without the, uh, the little supports in the middle. So I may have got it coming a little bit far out from the body. I would have liked it tucked in a bit more. But um, that'll be alright for now. At least it means I, if I need to I can wrap the pipe. But when I ran the engine before, what I found was it's actually reasonably cool when it comes out, out the muffler there. So I'll let that, uh, that other one soak in the acid for a little bit and then I'll paint it this evening. And um, it's getting late, but I may have a chance to run it to bake the paint on tonight and I can show what it sounds like. This is now out of the acid, I um, neutralized all of that with a lot of clean water, um, really sprayed it with water, and then used compressed air to dry it all off before painting it. This is the, the last coat. You do two light coats and then one reasonably heavy coat, uh, which of course ran a little bit, which is a pain, but this will now dry. I won't have a chance to run it overnight. Uh, it actually goes kind of matte black when it's when it's dry, and then you bake it on. Uh, you basically run the engine, and that that should bake it all on nicely. So, yeah, that'll have to wait until probably tomorrow after work now. And that should fit in there nicely. Uh, this is that same paint, so. Once it's, once it's actually baked on, it goes quite, quite hard. Uh, and the only other thing that happened is yesterday my ash arrived. So 
uh, not this stuff, this is just rough sawn timber. Um, but these are my ash planks, which now I need to start um, drawing up the, or I'll reprint out the, the templates and figure out how I'm actually going to do it with the ash. Uh, the very first thing I need to do is, um, with a piece of this ash, I don't know how thick it needs to be, but the first thing you need is a, um, a sort of plate, almost like a sill plate. This chassis rail isn't exactly flat, so I'll have to contour it and that'll give me a flat surface to build everything else up on. And the body's actually in two parts. So you've got the front, and that comes along to uh, somewhere along here. I'm not sure where the brake actually is, if it's here or, or about here, I think. So you've got the front half and the tail. Um, and I've just noticed I've got a bit of an oil leak down the bottom there. I think that's actually leaking from the gearbox. I think the gearbox uh, filler plug is maybe leaking a bit and I think that's happening when I've been running the engine and everything gets warm and it just makes the the oil a bit more runny so that's something I need to look at as well one final quick thing to note um, one of the computer games I like playing I don't really play that many these days uh, it's either killing Nazi type first-person shooter games or um, Assetto Corsa, which is a, a driving game, and I have a steering wheel for it, but I didn't have the, the, the gear shifter, and I had a look at those recently and realized they're, they're not actually that expensive. I think it was $65, about $70 delivered, uh, so I bought one of those, and it's really transformed the game. Um, it's a little six-speed six um, H shifter. It's just a plastic thing, but it works really well. The very cool thing about it is you can program the buttons to be anything you want. So normally the pattern would be sort of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Um, but because I can reprogram it, I can actually program it so it's the same as the Riley gearbox. So it's first, second, up to third, and then down to fourth. Um, so I've done that, um, and it's just so I can practice. Um, and get the sort of the muscle memory for the gear positions. The other good thing about it is I've got it mounted to my, my computer desk, which actually puts the stick up quite high, and it's pretty much in the same position, relative position to the wheel, as in the real car. So it, it's definitely made the game a lot more fun. Um, the steering wheel comes with paddle shifters, and I, I just don't like them. Um, so especially if you're, you're driving an older car that's supposed to, to have a clutch. So trying to use the clutch pedal and the paddle shifters just doesn't really work. But it didn't seem right just to slam it through the gears if it's an older car and you wouldn't really normally do that. So um, it makes the game a bit more realistic and a lot more fun to play. So I think that's where I have to stop for the night. It's the next evening after work on a Monday. Um, when I finished I came out to Big Shed to finish off the exhaust and last night when I was trying to get to sleep I suddenly realized I'd made a mistake. Um, maybe somebody noticed what that was but when I made my muffler I made the effectively the way I'm joining all these pipes is with a male part and a female part so they slide together and I made the muffler with two female parts on it, forgetting that I'd already put a female end on the end of the, the manifold pipe. So it meant I couldn't join those up. But then I realized that actually gave me the solution to my other problem, which was that the muffler was sticking out too far from the body. What I ended up doing was making a little coupling piece, which is this piece here. And it's actually got a slight bend in it. And the way I did that bend was the piece of pipe is too short to, to bend through my block of wood. And also I wanted to keep the ends nice and round so it, it mates with the, the sliding ends. So I used the angle grinder to cut slots in it. I just cut three little slots 
and then you sort of bend it together because uh, the slots will let it bend and you just weld it back up. So this gives me a little pipe with about a 10 degree bend on it. And what that allows me to do is position this muffler exactly where I want it because I can rotate that pipe and that'll change the positioning of the, the Brooklyn's muffler. So I've actually got that fitting reasonably well now. It does sit pretty low. Um, that may be too low. Uh, I'm not sure what sort of ground, ground clearance I'm going to need, but that's all adjustable. Uh, it's also sitting a bit low at the back here because it's only held with a piece of wire. So I'll have to see how that works. Um, if it's really a problem, I may end up having to undo some of the wrap on there, heat up this tube and try to very carefully bend the end of that up a little bit. Um, or else do the same trick where I slot it and weld it. I may end up doing that anyway. Um, just to lift up the angle on that, to lift the pipe up. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do that. Uh, it can't go too low down because it has to clear the, the springs and everything. Uh, the other problem is this pipe also has bends in it, so it rotates. I don't think it's sitting in the right orientation at the moment. Uh, I don't have anything clamping it on here, so so this can bend. Um, as it is at the moment, it's only sitting about an inch lower than the the bottom of the, the chassis. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. But really what I wanted to see was what it sounds like. So... Turn on the ignition. <laughs> So that ended up a lot quieter than I expected. Um, it's also not very rattly, which is good. And sounds okay, I think. The little fishtail thing doesn't actually make that much difference. It just changes the sound very slightly. Um, oh, I think my clamps have kind of come undone, so now it's slipped and it's touching the body as everything heats up. But I think that works pretty well. Um, I do have to be careful I don't make this any longer because, of course, there's a door here and you don't want the door to hit the can. So I do need to lift this up a little bit. But I think that's, that's sounding pretty good now. Okay. I ran it long enough for it to come up to a decent operating temperature. And I've got the carbs adjusted reasonably well. Um, so it's not running too rich or it's not running too lean. Um, but I'm pretty sure I am going to need a water pump. It, it definitely doesn't like sitting in one place. Obviously, if you're moving, it's going to get some cooling effect. But with no fan and no water pump and not, not enough head to get the thermosiphon really working, it was just puking out hot water. Um, kept an eye on all the temperatures. Nothing's too bad. 
Uh, the pipes do get hot, as you'd expect. The engine's pretty hot. I mean, you wouldn't want to hold your hand there, but you can touch it. Um, if you brush against the pipes with the uh, the wrap on there, that does stop you getting burnt. If it was just metal, you'd probably just sear your flesh off. So those were up to 200 and something degrees. Um, the muffler is definitely working. It, it sounds good. It's not too loud. And it's quite interesting the temperature difference you get on the at the entry point of the muffler uh, gets quite a lot hotter than at the back. So when it was running that was. Uh, that pipe there, I have adjusted things. So that's the beauty of using a little kinked pipe like that. You, you can rotate it and get the angles that you want. Um, that's almost correct. I might need to shorten it just a touch in here um, so that this so that the doors clear um, it should be okay though because remember there's a there's a sort of plate here so the doors actually up about here so it should clear the exhaust I've tweaked it and I've tweaked that pipe so that it's not actually hanging too far down past the bottom of the chassis rail um, I think it's almost it's almost level with it uh, this pipe is hot but touchable Again, this was running sitting. There's no airflow over it. So of course it's going to get hotter than normal. Um, I wanted to run it long enough to bake the exhaust paint onto the muffler. I am also going to get proper clamps because these hose clamps, you, you can't really get a lot of heat on them. Uh, and not heat, sorry, tension. So um, if you do them up too tightly, they just sort of strip or they, they, they skip. So that's uh that's good i think um yeah water pump is going to be needed I'm, I'm pretty sure of that the the water coming out of there there was water and a little bit of steam so it was getting hot it doesn't feel hot now um and the other thing i noticed was after i shut it off it kept running uh not very well but it was obviously running on um, in the end, to stop it, I actually had to put something over the, the carb intakes to starve it off air, and that stopped it. So, still a lot of tuning needed to be done, but it's good. It starts up, and it runs, and it sounds okay. It sounds very rattly, very tappity, but I think that's how they do sound. Um, and it doesn't look too bad. I think the, the line of the pipe will sort of follow the line of the body a bit. Uh, it's all tucked up out of the way. I may need to tweak what's happening at the end here. Um, it may need... Uh, I might bend it up a little bit. I'm not sure. It's, it's all out of the way there. Um, and I don't know exactly what the length is going to be yet. But... Oh, I'm really pleased with how that's come out. I think that looks... That looks pretty good for the um, the initial attempt. Like I say, one day I can come back and redo all of this because it's all sort of bolt-on, bolt-off type stuff. But it's enough to get the car running. And now that that's done, I think I should probably bite the bullet and actually start cutting up some ash. I think that's probably going to be a good idea. Okay, one last quick thing, as it's been running and it's all actually hot now, I want to see how easy it is to restart it. So, let's give this a try. Now we'll see if it stops. A little bit of a cough there on the at the end but um, that's good uh, so I think the static tune on it isn't isn't too bad the other thing I've noticed is now that I've got the, the a good exhaust on it and everything's buttoned up and tweaked a bit more uh, the advanced retard lever actually makes a much much more noticeable difference in how well the engines running um, you really can hear it and sort of feel it 
um, the revs pick up as you advance it a little bit. I think I do need to drop the idle, that's still a bit high. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's coming along.